Okay, in this video, we'll be talking about the magnetic force between two current carrying wires. Okay, recall that in the chapter 16.2, that means that in the video 16.2, we learned that the magnetic force on a conductor is BIL. Okay, so we know that the magnetic force on a conductor is BIL. And then, in the last video, which is 16.3, we learned that the magnetic flux density due to a straight current carrying wire is this one. And then this wire is supposed to be infinitely long. Okay? So, by combining the knowledge that you have learned so far, you realize that, okay, the magnetic force felt by the wire Y is F2. The magnetic force felt by the wire X is F1. And then the two wires are placed parallel to one another. And then you know that the direction of I1 is in the same direction as I2. Okay. Later on, I will teach you that when the currents are in the same direction, then the force is attractive that means that the two wires will attract each other okay but now you just take it that the f1 is in this in this direction and then the f2 is in this direction okay so actually this follows the newton third law because actually the magnitude of f2 is same as the magnitude of f1 because this term is exactly equal to this term okay you still remember what is the newton third law Okay. In the Newton's third law of motion, we know that every action must have a reaction which is of the same magnitude but opposite in direction. For example, if now you have two masses, then you know that the gravitational force is like this. And then for example, now you have two bar magnets, the magnetic force is like this. Now, if you, if you have two charges, then the electrostatic force is like this. If you have two objects in contact with each other, then you have your impulsive force like this. Okay, so you know that in your Newton third law of motion, you really have to um, take note that the force is of the same type. That means that the force F1 is a magnetic force. So, the force F2 is also a magnetic force and then they have the opposite directions and then they also have the same magnitude okay and then they must add on different bodies that means that the action is F1 and then the reaction is F2 when the action acts on this body the reaction acts on another body so you know that the action and reaction add on different bodies okay when we are getting the formula of b equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r we say that the wire should be infinitely long that means that l is an infinity value okay if you want to use this formula then you know that the force is infinity so there's no point in studying this one. Therefore, normally we study force per unit length instead of force, okay? Because we assume that the length must be of infinitely long. So if you want to measure the F1 and F2, normally they are infinitely large. So there's no point, okay? So normally we study force per unit length instead of force. Okay, you realize that the force per unit length is this. Okay, and then if the current I1 and I2 are 1 ampere, and then the distance between them is 1 meter, then you know that the magnetic force per length is 2 times 10 power negative 7 newton per meter. So you know that if you are asked to give the definition of 1 ampere, then this is your answer. 
one ampere is the value of a steady current in two straight parallel conductors of infinite length and negligible circular cross-section separated by a distance of one meter in vacuum producing a magnetic force of two times ten power negative seven newton per meter length on the conductor okay so now i want to teach you why if the currents are in the same direction, then the conductors will attract each other and then the vice versa. Okay, you still remember your Fleming left hand rule FBI. Okay, first of all, the magnetic flux density caused by the wire of current I1 at this region is into the Page, okay, because you use a right hand grip rule, so you know that the magnetic field, the magnetic flux density due to I1 is into the page, and then I2 is going upward. So FBI, B is into the page, and then I is here, so you know that F2 is here, okay? Okay, so for this case, the magnetic field that caused by the I2 is out of the page and then current is upward so FBI B is out of the page I is here so you know that the force is here okay so you know that when the currents are in the same direction then the conductors will attract each other okay because the magnetic force is a an is an attractive force if the currents are in the opposite direction, for example, like this, okay, you use a right hand grip rule, you know that the magnetic field due to I1 at this region is into the page, okay, and then I2 is going downward, FBI, okay, B is into the page and then I is downward, so you know that F is to this direction, okay, so the magnetic field due to the current i2 is into the page okay you use a right hand grip rule and then you know that the current is in up direction so fbi so you know that the force is this direction so you know that when the currents are in the opposite direction then the conductors will repel each other okay normally you have to memorize this straight away because during the examination you already no longer have time to to find the direction of force one by one and then you come to the conclusion normally i will advise you to straight away memorize that if the currents are in the same direction then they are friends then they will attract each other if the currents are in the opposite directions then they are enemy okay because they have different they have opposite ideas so they are enemies so they will repel each other okay normally you really have to memorize some things so that it can save your work and time during the examination. So let's do some questions. Two long parallel wires X and Y are shown. Find the force per unit length between two wires. You know that the currents in each wire are opposite directions. So the magnetic force must be repulsive. Okay, F over L is this formula. Okay, then you can find the force per unit length. Two long wires S and T are separated by a distance of 0.05 meter in vacuum and carrying currents of 2 ampere and 4 ampere respectively in the same direction. If X is fixed and then T is free to move, what is the force per unit length and the direction that must be applied to T to prevent it from moving? Okay, you know that the currents are in the same directions, so they will attract each other. Okay, so the force. The attractive force must be in this direction. But then now you have to apply your own force to prevent T from moving. Therefore, your force must be away from S. Okay, must be here. So your answer is away from S. And then you use this formula F over L equal to this one to get the magnetic force per unit length. Three similar long thin wires X, Y, Z are placed parallel to one another. Please find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force per unit length on Y. Okay, so Y is your main character. Okay, that means that 
For example, you want to study x and y. You know that the currents are opposite directions, therefore they will repel each other. Therefore, force on y by x is to right, okay? Because they will repel each other. And then you look at y and z. The currents are of opposite direction, therefore they will repel each other. So the force acting on y by z is to here, okay? And then you find the force per unit length. And then when you know that the directions are opposite, you can cancel them out. Okay? Three long conductors S, Y, Z are placed parallel to one another. What are the magnitude and direction of the resultant force per unit length ending on X? Okay, so X is your main character. Okay, so you study X and Y first. You know that the currents are of opposite directions, therefore they will repel each other. So the force acting on X by Y is upward. Okay, and then you see X and Z. The currents are in the same direction, therefore they will attract each other. So the force acting on X by Z is attractive. That means that the force acting on X by Z is downward. Okay, so this is upward, this is downward, so you can straight away cancel them. Okay, so you can find the magnitude and direction respectively. So in the next video, we will be talking about the determination of the ratio E over M, which is the charge over mass, which is the specific charge. Thank you.